I'm Teria Shantor and we are exploring the basic tenets and principles of logotherapy. And what I want to expound now is Frankel's concept of the unconscious God. A very provocative statement and let us contemplate what he really means by it. Frankel says that deeply within our very being, in our unconscious depths, we have a keen realization, an intuitive knowing of a relationship that we need to have with our lives that he spells out as a relationship with the divine, that we are self-transcendent creatures, that we're not satisfied just to exist or just to be self-absorbed, that we need to be connected to and inspired by something or someone other than ourselves. And it's this fundamental need which can also be expounded as our will to meaning that is so fundamental to all of us. And we need to understand what it means. It doesn't mean, and Frankel states this very categorically, it doesn't mean that we are essentially divine creatures. In the first video, I talked about um, being directed by the tension of what is still to be realized in front of us. In other words, that we are not complete in ourselves. We are complete as we respond to life and become part of it in the way that it has been ordained for us. And this is really, it's like a potential, it's like a possibility, it's like an open um, opportunity that is ahead of us and that we are to explore through all our different experiences to come to this knowledge that we are connected to more than ourselves and that our, the fullness of our being is really this, this mission of bringing the transcendent and all the ultimate truths in life um, in a real way into our own lives. So unscathed, the unscathed uh, human spirit that Frankel speaks about is this capability that, uh, that remains with us and um, that we are not to trample underfoot or to deny um, or not give voice to, which is, is really an, an ongoing search, life as an ongoing quest to find its ultimate meaning. But it's a journey and it's, it's a process of development. So let us look at the three avenues that Frankel spelt out through which we can experience meaning in life. And in exploring that, we will understand what meaning really is. Meaning is not something that Frankl said we can conjure up or that we can just um, bring into being. It's something that we find. And the fact that we find it makes life a call. It makes it a mission, a co-mission that we are being called upon to step out of ourselves into realizing the very purpose of our own and unique lives. Now, what are the three avenues? He calls it the creative values, the experiential values, and the attitudinal values. What does he understand by creative values? I think we all will understand this very clearly that even a little child and throughout all our lives we feel our importance is connected to what we have to give to the world. If we feel that we are needed, that there's something that we can contribute, that we, somewhere where we can make our mark, somewhere where we are actively involved, giving of ourselves, giving of our talents, our experience, our wisdom, just being there in a service capacity to something outside of ourselves that we feel are meaningful, that means something to other people, that makes a difference in the world. These are creative values and we cannot live without them. 
Um, this, is, this is part of our dignity. This, yeah, a responsibility that are given to us gives us a feeling of self-worth and dignity and a place of honor and authority in the world, a place of feeling fully yourself. Outside of that, if you feel nobody needs you and that whatever you bring is not good enough or is always criticized or, you know, put down, this, this actually is an assault on your sense of worth as a person. Right, so what about experiential values? These are the most exquisite of all the values. And actually, what a young and growing child needs to have a feeling of self-worth, what are they? These are the things that life gives us, you know, in terms of its beauty, you know, in terms of harmony and goodness, and in terms of truth, something we discover that means something to us and that enlightens our minds and that inspires us and makes us come alive. Even the supreme restfulness that we can have in a beautiful situation, whether it's an encounter with somebody or whether it's the appreciation of music, of art, something that draws us out of ourselves and affirms us with a feeling, a yes, of life on, upon us. Um, a study of, low, uh, of, of autistic children have convinced me so much about this, that a, fundam a fundamental need in a child is to feel that there is a yes to its, its existence. Um, an autistic child, I'm not going into the reasons for this, but has not had the experience that any infant needs a feeling of yes to its existence, a feeling of you are love worthy. Um, um, I, you know, like a natural mother would say, I'm so glad you're here. Um, um, and I've given you a name. You are mine. As the scripture says, God has created us for his glory. He's given us a name and says to us, you are mine. That feeling of supreme belonging, of being taken up with. And what? That's also a feeling of connectedness, isn't it? It's a feeling of supreme connectedness. People who don't have this feeling of being love worthy, their creativity can go wild because they want to prove themselves. They feel they've got to make a place in the world. It becomes an ambition and then it loses its meaning. Then, then it, it is because it doesn't make a connection. It's not plugged into a source of life-giving power. And the final um, set of values that Frankel spoke about are the attitudinal values and we're going to explore this in a following talk which is the kind of attitude that we can take when things go wrong in the face of you know hurt of being rejected of not being accepted or even of a sudden illness befalling us or a tragedy that strikes us or what do we say in the face of death? Um, it's the kind of attitude then that we will then have um, and which should always be in the direction of, and we'll see that suffering and guilt and death all uh, urge us towards this point of despite all of these that we can triumphantly proclaim that life is unconditionally meaningful and life is worth living. In fact, it is so much worth living that we defiantly take a stand against that which assails, harms or spoils it. And that's actually what he meant by attitudinal values. And we'll see that is the highest peak of spiritual maturity, to have the right kind of attitude an attitude, yes, of being there to creatively give whenever we can and whenever we called upon to, um, and an attitude of being open to all of life's experiences, not excluding any one of them, and the most precious one, the one of encounter between two people that truly are connected and communing with each other as, as actually... 
a, an experience of this divine connectedness that we have towards life that we embrace as something completely meaningful. And then the final attitude that we will not va waver in our belief, in our basic trust in life, um, despite whatever might befall us, that we can transcend even the negative in life with a triumphant positive.